Welcome to the Z Hut. Well, today we're going to be talking about macro photography, specifically the equipment that you're going to need if you're going to get started doing this. Now, your standard kit lens that comes with the camera, this one's the Canon 18 to 55. This will focus in within about a foot of the object. Well, when you're doing macro, you want to take a picture of an insect or something. This isn't going to do a very good job. So there's some tools to help you get in closer. And one of the cheapest and most affordable is the extension tubes. What the extension tubes are is they put the lens further away from the camera sensor, which enables you to focus in closer. Now this is a manual set. There's no electronics for your autofocus. And I'm actually thinking of getting a set for the autofocus and try it out with my Canon 18 to 55. But this one here was like $8 shipped. And it screws apart. There's three sections, a one, two, and three, and each one's bigger, and you can do different combinations because Sometimes you don't want the max on there. Depending on what lens you use, your focal point might actually be behind where the lens is and it won't work. But with a 50 millimeter lens, it works pretty good. And I got one here. And the nice thing about the prime lenses are you generally can have better aperture. This Canon 18 to 55 see here I can't remember offhand I think it's like a, a 5 f5 is the widest open you can get it doesn't I don't see it written on the lens it's got to be there somewhere though but this 50 millimeter prime this is an old Olympus lens and I have an adapter ring which allows me to connect it to Canon this is a f1.5 Four. And quite simply to use it, take and put your adapter ring on, snap it on, attach it, let's see here, the red dots, attach it to your extension tubes, and attach it to your camera. Then what you do is you set your focus all the way out or all the way in. I find it doesn't really matter that much because when you focus using the prime lens and extension tubes, you pretty much move the camera itself in and out to focus. Now another technique, instead of the extension tubes, to get in closer. Pull that off is called a reversal ring. Spin that filter off. And what a reversal ring is, is you get it in the same threads that your filters are. Get it started on there. There we go. Puts it on and then lets you attach the lens backwards. And this increases the magnification as well. And the same thing, you leave your focus all the way in or all the way out, and you use the camera. And I found both work about just as well, but if you really want to get in close, so you're trying to take a picture of like a gnat or a mosquito. I've tried this and it does work. Have the lens reversed and use the extension tubes. Now, your depth of field is going to be very, very small. I'm talking like a couple sheets of paper width depth of field. So if you're going to go this route, you probably wouldn't want to use this for taking a picture of an insect or a bug that's going to move. This would be more of like taking pictures of some moss or a leaf. You want to see the veins really good. And you'll probably want to use stacking software then. And there's one I've been looking at and thinking about purchasing, Colin, called um, is it Helicon Focus, I believe was the name of it. And 
that's another reason why I was thinking of getting the extension tubes that have the autofocus because it can do focus bracketing with that software. You put your lens on with the extension tubes and then you set your furthest and your nearest focus point. What it'll do is it'll automatically adjust the lens and take a series of pictures. Now they also do make another thing instead of extension tubes called a bellows which is adjustable. It's pretty much like a, a plastic leathery like thing and you turn these little set screws on there and it will move it forward and backward and you can adjust instead of using extension tubes and it's more exact. And also there's some DIY things out there. I've seen some people using Pringle cans and if you do a search on YouTube on the Pringle can macro photography you'll find some tutorials on that and all you need for that is a Pringles can um, your cat body cap and then if I remember right a lens cap if I'm not mistaken and you got to drill holes in them and stuff and then glue them or tape them to the Pringles can too but so for how in the, to use the lens to get in close you can also go and spend an outrageous amount of money and buy a macro lens but if you're watching this video you you probably don't have the money for that and I sure as heck don't want to spend eight hundred a thousand dollars for a lens that pretty much would just be used for macro when this works fine take this apart so the next thing is your lighting when you're doing macro photography, you're going to be in real close. And to get more depth of field, you're going to have to turn your aperture up. I mean, this lens will go 1.4. The only reason I'd use the 1.4 is if I was using that software doing the focus bracketing. Otherwise, I'm running around an F8, F11, somewhere in there. So I get some depth of field. But with that, you need a good amount of light and I'll show you the solution for that problem actually I got two one is this little item this is a ring light this uh, particular one takes two batteries and uh, turn it on you can see it gets bright it also has a function here Let's see I remember it's it hasn't been since last year I used this off on there is a way where you can turn half on one side or the other there we go took me a minute to remember how to use this like I said I haven't used it since last year because it just hit spring now and that's why I'm digging all this stuff out and there you push that and what that'll do is it'll give you a shadow effect if you just want to light from one side otherwise you go the full and turn this back off. Now to use this, um, I ordered a ring for my Olympus lens and that's a 40, 49 millimeter. But um, when I got this, the smallest it came with was the uh, 58. So I'll show you how this works on my 58 here because you take this and it's threaded, the same threads as your filter, and it just screws on. And remember, never crank them on. Just barely lightly stick it on. You want it just tight enough where it's not going to come off. Take the lens on, and this mount on the camera like that and then it's grooved so it just slides on oh, in there in the right way there it snaps on and it's able to rotate and it's not going to just fall off because you know when you're adjusting your focus the end turns and this 
lets it turn instead of the whole thing moving. Now that's one way to put some light on there. Another way, and this is, and there's this little item that I made myself. And if you go on eBay, you can buy an item similar to this. And what this is for is to put your flash on and get it off to the side of the camera. Because if you had your flash right on the top, and they, they push down or angle down a little bit, but not enough. When you're shooting close up, doing macro photography, you're within a couple inches of the lens. What this does is you mount it on there, put the flash to the side, then you can bounce your light in. And I'll show you how that works. That needs to be on there. Oh, and to use it, you're going to need a cable. Or you want a, uh, a flash, um, a wireless flash. I'm having a mind fart here trying to think of the exact name of it, but this, this is cheaper. This was like under 10 bucks. And like I said, I made it myself, so. Oh, that's got to be tightened up. Now I generally, when I'm out doing my macro photography, I have the ring light on plus the flash. So depending on what I'm doing, what I'm trying to take a picture of, you know, you can, you've got the option of just the ring light or just the flash or a combination of both. Now I forget what they call it. It's like an off camera flash bracket or something like that. It's called, I can't remember the exact name of it. But another nice benefit of it is you got a hand grip down here. So you can hold it here, plus you can hold it here, and you've got two hands on the camera, you can hold it a lot steadier. Because if you're doing insect photography, you're, you're not going to be using a tripod. It's just they're moving around too much, and it, it's not going to work for you. Loosen that up. This on. And that will go on there. And then let me grab. I've got my flash right here. It's a little awkward to put this together, but once you get it together, it works really good. Tighten that down. I got to tighten that up a little bit. Like I said, it is a little awkward, but after you play with it for a while, now you can see there's my flash. It's on the side and it's there we go. I gotta tighten that up. That bottom bracket's a little loose. Fix that. There we go. That would be about how it's set. And then like I said, you you got a holder down here and right here. And now you've got the option to use the flash or the ring light or both. It's your choice. And I do get some interesting looks when I'm out running around on some hiking trails and stuff looking for spiders and insects to take pictures of. People give you some interesting looks at the setup, but who cares? You're out there having fun. Now, another thing with using the flash, let me just let that sit back, is you are not going to want to use just the flash, that light. As you can see, the ring light has a cover, and it's got a little bit of whitish to it to kind of soften the light up. 
So what you do for the flash is it's just a mini soft box that goes on your flash. <coughs> and this is another item that's it's super cheap. I'm uh, not going to take the whole minute it takes. Fold it up. you got to stick and run everything through. But I'll show you what it does is it fits over. And you, you have to run the Velcro strap through everything. And it just gives you a small little softbox. And again, it's a cheap item. Um, I don't even think I paid 10 bucks for this. I think it was like 6 7 Cheap, affordable, and I also use this for other things besides macro photography. And if you're using your flash, you know, doing a portrait or something, this will help soften the light up and make your picture look a whole lot better. Oh, I think we've covered the lenses, the extension tubes, your lighting. Only one thing left. You're going to want a tripod. Now, like I said, for doing shooting for insects, you're, you're not going to really be able to use a tripod. Unless it's a spider sitting on its web. That's a different story. Then you could use a tripod. But you don't want just any old tripod. And you especially don't want, you know, a pan and tilt head. That just ain't going to work worth a crap. This tripod here is the Targus TGP60T. And I actually did a review on this. Um, if you look on my channel and my other videos, you can see a review on this. It's an under $20 tripod that's, I feel it's as good as a $100 tripod. And I'll show you why. It gives you, well, first, what I got to do is I got to pull the main stem out. Because for doing macro, we're not going to need the main stem. What that allows you to do is you've seen me pull this piece off the bottom. That sticks in there, so then you can put your head on there. But the thing about this tripod is, uh, oh, he's giving me a little trouble. There we go. I can fold it down almost completely flat, and we're talking it's off the ground just a tiny bit and if you're shooting something on the ground that's perfect otherwise you can also adjust it you know bring the back one up to angle it down or bring it up even more to get that camera pointed down this is the, the kind of tripod i recommend you want one that you can adjust the legs out a lot then also you don't want to use your pan and tilt head off, you know, like a video tripod. And a lot of tripods come with them. They're, I use one on this, the camera that's recording this video. And it's a camcorder, a Canon camcorder. And the pan and tilt head works perfect for doing videos. But for doing macro photography, get a ball head. Trust me. You will find it so much more useful and easier to use. And the only thing I can really say is you're going to have to try it to understand what I'm talking about. It just is way, way better than trying to use a pan and tilt. Way better. All right, the last piece of equipment that I have to show you for doing macro photography is a remote trigger release. Now again, when you're doing the insect photography and you're doing it handheld, you don't need this. But when you got it on a tripod and you're doing the photography, you're going to want a remote shutter release so that the camera's not moving. If you don't have one, there is the option to go into your menu and set the time delay. But this is way better, and I think this one was like $15. And... Besides just being a remote shutter release and you just push the button and it takes the picture, otherwise you can push the button 
push it forward and it locks the shutter in the bulb mode. Otherwise, it's got electronics in it and it's got a timer so you could do time lapse. So you, you've got something you can use in multiple different types of photography and under 15 bucks. And I'm sure if you're a photographer and you're watching this video, you probably already got something like this. Even if it doesn't have the electronics in it, just the basic shutter release will work great for doing this because I I don't know I suppose there is a situation you might want to do a, a time-lapse macro like if it was a a seed sprouting and but that's something for a different video well, with that I think we pretty much covered all the basics for the macro photography at least the equipment I have there is a lot more stuff out there that I don't have but this is the basics that uh, you would need to get started in it and get some decent pictures. So get your extension tubes or get your lens reversal ring and throw the lens on your camera and go out in the woods and have some fun taking some macro pictures. And this, it's all affordable equipment. You know, if you can't afford it all at once, you know, buy it over a few weeks. You know, that's under $10, that's under 15 This was like 4 I think um, the ball head, uh, that I think I got used for like 25 bucks, and it's a good one. It's German made, older. This this was made back when their film cameras were still all there really was. Digital had really come out. Your flash, I'm sure you've already got one. You can even use a cheap flash. Um, the remote cable for the flash to go from the camera to the flash, if you don't have a remote trigger. That was like twelve to fifteen dollars. The ring light, um, God, I can't remember offhand, but I, I know I didn't pay over twenty dollars for it. And then of course that little adapter, I made for putting it all on. Oh, and I did forget to mention, this will work on a tripod too. I uh, need to thread this. I got the hole drilled down here. I don't know if you can see that or not. But I've uh, I ordered a tap so I can tap this for threads, so it'll screw onto the tripod. That way I can use the flash off to the side still and use this whole setup on the tripod. So with that, I hope you have fun doing some macro photography, and uh, if you get some pictures, go ahead and. Throw a link up to them down there in the comment section. I'll take a look at them. And uh, who knows, if you got something really good, I'll throw the picture up on one of my future episodes. So thank you for joining us here at the Z-Hut. And I hope to see you again in a future episode.